Hello. So, this video, uh, we're going to be talking about applying logical deduction and the free three phases of mathematical reasoning for mathematical modeling. In particular, um, we're going to be talking about applying it to the kiln problem I introduced uh, in the last video. So, as I mentioned in the last video, uh, my mother, who's a you know my actual mother, <laughs> is a, a master uh, potter, and she's building a, a wood kiln. This is an actual thing that's happening, um, <clears throat> and she didn't have the tools necessary to determine if the um, base that she was building was actually square. Uh, she was gonna go out and get said tools, but she decided to ask me instead, do you know a way to determine that with you know, the tools that she had? So the very first thing I did to solve this problem, um, because again, I, I, I know nothing about kilns, not really. I mean, I know some very basic stuff. Um, so the first thing I did is I went down to the actual build site um, and, and took a look at what she was doing. And so what she was building, or what I saw, was this rectangular sort of platform that she was building. And I'm just stress I want to stress this is the sort of vernacular version. This is what she literally asked me, as opposed to what I'm trying to solve, uh, which is maybe different, as I'm going to explain. <laughs> Um, so the very first thing I did was I grabbed a piece of paper, pencil, went down to the, bids, the dig site and sort of dig site, build site, and uh, a little bit of both really, um, and, and do a quick sort of sketch of what I was looking at. And so I went through exactly these phases that I'm about to describe. So the phase, the phase one, the first phase, this is clarifying the problem. So more often than not, people tend to have a picture in their head of what they're asking you to, uh, to solve when they give you a problem, a metaphorical picture. And a lot of the times, because they can sort of, they obviously know what they're after, they think a lot of that information is obvious, and as a result, they may not give you all of the information. So the very first thing you want to do is clarify exactly what they're after, right? So, the very first thing I asked, I asked a few questions. The very first thing I asked, I said, okay, so you want to know if the four corners are 90 degrees, or pi over two radians, if you like radians. So I asked this because when she said, okay, I want to know if the angles are square. Well, it's a small thing, but square is a shape, not an angle, right? But me knowing sort of everyday language, I'm pretty sure what she meant was she wants the angles to be the same as the angles of a square, i.e. 90 degrees. Nonetheless, it's important to clarify that that's what she was after her and not actually believing that the rectangle she had was a square. That's a very different problem, right? So she tells me, yes, that is exactly what I want. So now I know what I'm really after, and maybe I'll, I'll track this in blue. What she's really after is this information about whether or not these angles are actually right angles, right? So I'm, I wrote it in blue, but really these are all question marks. Okay, so far so good. So that was one question. Another question, I ask her, okay, again, knowing that uh, Looking at this, I'm pretty sure, although I may not have figured out yet, but I'm pretty sure at this time that I, I could figure out if they're square or not. But thinking ahead a little bit, I'm pretty sure if they aren't square, she's going to ask me if I can figure out how to make them square. So my next question is, are any of these brick? Because what this actually looks like, I mean, I drew a simple square, but really what it looks like is a bunch of brick lined up along the edge, right, to make that length. So that's a bunch of brick kind of edge on all the way and up there, et cetera, right? So I ask if any of these bricks are locked in place. Because if she's gonna want me to fix this, I need to know if I can move any of these bricks, right? And she immediately says, why, yes, they are. And in fact, the two left brick over here need to stay where they are. Okay. 
And the last question I asked her was, well, it was really a two-part question. Do you know how long each side is? To which she said, no, she didn't think to measure the length of the side, uh, of these sides directly necessarily. And do you know how long each side should be? Meaning in her actual blueprints, right, in her theoretical version of this thing, does she know what those lengths are? To which she said, yes. Right? So in fairness, um, she, she had measured the lengths originally, but she had adjusted things uh, right before I had come down to the, the build site, so she wasn't sure exactly what the lengths were at that time. It's not like she just threw bricks down and was like, ah, that looks good, right? No, that's not what happened. Um, so I, again, this is real, a real thing that happens. So I go down there, I ask these three questions, and I, I'm like, okay, I think I can do this, let me think. So then, sort of in my head, off to the side, I took the problem that she had given me and I reworked it into sort of a, a classic math problem. So instead of saying, can you tell if these uh, angles you know, on, the, on the bricks for this sort of floor layer are square, I thought about it and I was like, okay, the rectangle can be difficult to deal with for geometry. In geometry, you tend to deal more with triangles and building things up with triangles. So instead, I looked at the triangle that is formed. And I asked myself, if this were a 90 degree angle, I would have to know, right, that this would be a right triangle and this would be a right triangle. So this question really becomes, is this triangle and this triangle a right triangle? Are these both right triangles? And if I drew the diagonal the other way, are the other two right triangles? So this became a question of how do you know if a triangle, just in general, any three-sided shape, is a right triangle. And again, geometry background, right? So how do you know if a triangle is a right triangle? Well, Pythagorean theorem holds. Okay, so in order for this to be a right triangle, I would need that this obey, obeys Pythagorean theorem. So when I went and asked her, you know, how long is each side, I got some answer, which in full truthness, truthfulness, I don't remember the actual numbers, but I'm gonna just sort of make some up here. So let's say it was something like, um, I think it was something around 170 inches in this direction and maybe 70-ish uh, in that direction, ballpark. Big numbers, not terribly important to the general story, but I get these values, right? So if, Pythagore th if Pythagorean theorem works, what does that mean? Well, that means I have leg and leg, so that would tell me that 170 uh, well, I guess I don't need units for this part of it. 170 inches squared plus 70 inches squared square rooted. This is some number. I don't know what number it is. So plug it into a calculator, find out. I honestly, I just came up with these numbers. I don't know what this is off the top of my head, so I'm just gonna make up a value. Um, this is say 189 or something, again. I'm totally making that up. It's probably not even close. But what this tells me is, is that <coughs> if the Pythagorean theorem holds, then this side would have to be 189 inches. In fact, I will again write this as a different color. So I told my mother, okay. So, so what I actually told her was I was like, all right, can you determine if this, these things are square? I said, yes, I can. I can do that because based on the numbers you gave me, measure from corner to corner and corner to corner, which would give me the same sides but a different way, 
and to see if it's 189, or whatever the number was, inches long. If it is, that means that it is square. If it's not, that means that you need to move these two bricks in order to make it 189 inches while making these lengths and these lengths still what they need to be, 170 and 70. And so this gave a way to show, right, to, to determine using just the lengths, because she had a working tape measure, um, it gave her a method, a, a mechanism, so that she could actually go about finding out if this thing had square corners, okay? So I went from, can you determine if the angles on this kiln brick floor are square, to this. Now I'm gonna break down, so I went through my logic, but let me break this down into, again, the, the phases. So here was phase one, clarifying the problem, right? So phase two is quantifying. The problem. So when I quantified the problem, what that means is that I determined um, all the numbers that I needed, right? I asked, do you know the lengths of these things versus what they should be? Well, I knew what the lengths should be. That's how I built my thing, right? But I could actually go out and find actual lengths to adjust that even before we started. Turns out they were right anyway, so it didn't actually matter um, in reality because uh, she hadn't adjusted it much and she was you know, trying to keep it accurate. So find the actual lengths. And at this point, uh, you might think 189 is the quantifying bit, but it's not. So phase two is just quantifying the information you got sort of from phase one, right? Do you know what the lengths are? Yes. You know, or sorry, do you know what the lengths are? No. Okay, find those. Do you know what the lengths should be? Yes, record the should be lengths. And that's the 170 and 70, which again, in this case, they happen to end up being the same because she was being quite diligent along the way. Then phase three, this is um, actually sort of formulating your solution. So formulate or, or compute solution. So this is where I would apply my deductive logic. Like, so here I had built this, I had quantified in phase two the pieces of the triangle I knew, determined the thing I needed was this diagonal, right, 189. So that told me that I need the Pythagorean theorem. So that's what phase three is. So phase three was applying Pythagorean theorem to determine the diagonal. Now what I want to point out here, not only you know, the process, phase one, phase two, phase three, but I also want to point out that when my mother gave me this question, can you determine blah, which I've already said many times now, I asked her my questions and then I gave her the result. I said, okay, you want the diagonal to be 189 inches or whatever it was that I computed for both diagonals. I didn't really explain all of this other stuff, right? The, I used the Pythagorean theorem, I found the determination, I did it because using right triangles, right, I'm determining if they're right triangles using geometry and this theory about congruent triangles and all these things. I didn't mention any of that because the person I was trying to, th that asked me the question didn't ask about that stuff. They asked and asked for an answer. How do I do this? So I gave them the end result. And now I'm over here. <laughs> Sorry about that, the uh, audio cut out, so I had to back up a little. Um, so as I was saying, hopefully if I got the right spot, um, what my mother had asked for, I just gave her the answer. I skipped right to sort of the result of phase three. Nonetheless, I have all of this information that I can use to justify, back up, explain my answer. So this is what normally happens when you are doing some sort of like business proposal, right? The front page of your proposal or front page of your sort of analysis result is the end of phase three. It's the result. It's the just here's the thing you need. But after that, often, you want to support that answer. You don't want to make it seem like you just pulled a number out of a hat or anything like that. 
that's the rest of this stuff, right? So even though you don't necessarily provide this in your sort of here's your answer, it's all important to provide by way of justification or explanation for your answer, okay? All right, so this is the sort of logical deduction as applied to the kiln problem um, that I had. And again, just to clarify this, phase one, phase two, phase three. Um, phase one, you wanna clarify the problem. In practice, more often than not, this finds all kinds of things that you maybe weren't expecting to need to know. Um, so it's, it's always a good idea to make sure you've clarified what they're after. <clears throat> phase two is sort of applying numbers and what you need to the situation, right? Quantifying it, turning it into the mathematical language, the little drawing here. And phase three is actually formulating and computing an actual answer, coming up with the 189 inch uh, diagonal or whatever the number actually is, because again, I'm, I don't actually know that off the top of my head. Okay, it's that, is that.